Hi, it's Thursday, October 23rd. This is Tropical Storm Melissa in the Central Caribbean. My last video was three days ago on Monday. I've been a bit busy this week, but at the time, Melissa was back here in the Eastern Caribbean. So you can see it hasn't really made it that far in three full days. That's kind of the story with this system is slow movement, weak steering currents, and an uncertain track forecast that has remained challenging throughout this week. And we're hopefully going to start narrowing down the future of Melissa going forward for the remainder of this week, but there still remains a wide range of possibilities, and we're going to get into it here. Looking at this visible satellite loop, we've had an exposed circulation for most of the last couple days as Melissa first formed. Today is maybe the first day that we've seen some convective elements arrayed around the center, which is somewhere in this dimple that you see in the clouds here. This isn't a particularly strong inner core structure yet though, and we can tell that from aircraft reconnaissance data from the US Air Force, which is measuring the wind speed around the center. You can see the central pressure is 1,006 millibars, not very strong, and the strongest winds are still well removed from that central position. So there's not this really tight ring of max wind that is forming near the center. Rather, we have this spread out field of strong wind on the eastern side of the system. So it remains large and sprawling, and not particularly compact at this time. This indicates that we don't yet have the setup for any kind of rapid intensification into a strong hurricane here, and that's because the system continues to fight westerly wind shear from this direction. You'll see some cirrus cloud elements, these feathery cirrus, moving from left to right on your screen. We continue to have that uh, impeding the system's organization. However, gradual improvement in the structure continues as we now have convective elements around the center and as the storm begins to make a little bit of a move toward the north here it may have an opportunity to continue intensifying currently max winds are about 45 miles per hour now the big challenge with melissa has been the track forecast which has been more uncertain than usual with weak steering currents and this is a situation where using any one particular model or model run will get you in quick trouble because it doesn't accurately reflect uh, the likely outcomes of this storm track. Let's take the GFS for example. There's a couple of scenarios that are less likely and yet are still occurring in some models. In the GFS, this is a plot for uh, black isobars here showing the surface center just a few hours after this video, and then the mid-level wind barbs here in the dark green show you where the mid-level center is on the model. There's really two problems with the GFS that keep recurring. One is that this mid-level circulation is too far to the northeast, at least on this run it is, relative to where it is in reality. And the second is the model has some physics biases that are really being magnified in this situation because of the sensitivity in the track forecast and the steering. In this model run, and really all model runs this week of the GFS, a lot of thunderstorm towers develop near this mid-level circulation and try to generate vorticity beneath them yanking this weak surface circulation towards the northeast and underneath of the mid-level center. So on the model, you'll see an immediate consolidation of a tight circulation towards the northeast manifesting as a jump that then quickly moves up towards Hispaniola in the model. This has been true of nearly every GFS run this week. It has not verified thus far and is unlikely to going forward because this is a known bias of the model trying to generate too much vorticity under deep convective hot towers and in this particular scenario, the error is magnified relative to its average value. So the GFS seems to be a poor choice, at least in the current setup. If you compare that to the ECMWF model, you'll see that the surface circulation hangs out to the west more like it has been. It's a sheared system, and we've seen that exposed circulation from time to time, and a gradual move toward the north, not a yank northeastward toward Hispaniola like the GFS, is what occurs in most other models and seems to be more likely right now just given what we've observed so far this week. Now one of the reasons the GFS moves into Hispaniola uh, due to that bias is uh, because the location of the storm matters a lot for its steering here. This is the European Ensemble mean 500 millibar flow which is approximately the steering level for a moderate strength storm and right now there are two ridges, one over the northeastern Caribbean that's imparting a southerly steering flow on the central Caribbean, and then there's a new ridge starting to nose in 
over the Gulf and Western Caribbean and Straits of Florida. Here's Melissa. Now you can see that it's closer to the Eastern Ridge than it is to the Western Ridge right now. So on the GFS, because the storm jumps to the Northeast, it gets closer to this southerly river of flow. And so it's able to be more quickly ushered into Hispaniola and out of the Caribbean. If, however, the storm remains farther west for a longer time, it's more marooned in this break between the two ridges. You have southerly flow and then northerly flow that you'll see become stronger as this ridge builds in over the Straits of Florida. Over the next day, day and a half, you see this ridge show up here and it starts to impart more of a northeasterly flow that tries to pin the storm down in the Caribbean for a longer time. That ends up fighting with this southerly flow over the southern Caribbean and if the storm is closer to either one of these rivers, that one will have more influence on where the storm goes. Hence the uncertainty in this forecast. This is kind of like trying to balance a basketball on your finger and predict which way gravity is going to make it lean and fall off your finger. It's sensitive and it's hard to be exact about this. One of the best things that we can do in weather forecasting is characterize the uncertainty given the particular situation we're in. Sometimes that uncertainty is low and it's a really easy steering flow for the storm. Other times we have these competing flows where the position of the storm just means a lot. Just a few miles to the west or east here can make a huge difference in the ultimate future of the storm. And we just don't have the precision and data to be exact about that. So we have this range of possibilities that unfortunately is a little larger than average for Melissa. Now, if we look at the European ensemble mean, we'll see that the average of the ensemble starts to move towards the west here once this ridge builds in over the Straits of Florida. And this is what most models other than the GFS are now doing. Instead of jamming up into Hispaniola right away, it moves north for the first little bit. And then as this ridge builds over to the north, we get a little bit of a turn towards perhaps the west in the vicinity of Jamaica. We don't yet know whether it's going to get up north of Jamaica or turn south of Jamaica or over Jamaica. But in that vicinity, we're expecting a turn towards the west, still moving slowly. And then the key point here is that this ridge isn't going to remain entrenched here for very long. There's a big trough over the Great Plains. This is going to come eastward. This ridge is a short-lived passerby that will move to the east. And so at some point here, that ridge erodes. We have this trough moving into the southeastern US. And at some point, this system will be able to finally make an actual turn towards the north and northeast. On the European Ensemble, this occurs west of Jamaica, but it could just as easily occur near or over Jamaica and then moving over somewhere like eastern Cuba. We can visualize how the uncertainty grows by looking at this plot of all 51 members of the European Ensemble, each red number being a location of Melissa in these 51 possible versions of the future. This is the initial time here, the six hour forecast, and you can see there's actually quite a spread in the initial location. And that ends up mattering a lot as we go forward. We'll see that the northeastern group continues towards the northeast and makes it near the tip of Haiti. The southwestern group remains southwest for longer, and you'll see this spread out as the entire grouping starts to drift off towards the west here. You see the incredible spread in where Melissa could be on the model by Saturday night. Now, I do want to note that this grouping down here, probably too large because this tracks all the way back to the initial time when there's this grouping just due south of eastern Jamaica showing where Melissa might be presently. And this is definitely too far west. If you actually look at where the reconnaissance aircraft is identifying the storm and we look in satellite imagery, that location is here. That is not due south of Jamaica. So too many of the European ensemble members are centering the storm here, whereas the storm is actually a little bit farther east. So we need to keep that in mind when we look at this forecast as we go forward. This grouping that turns to the west well south of Jamaica, it's likely overrepresented in this distribution of possible futures. So you see the ensemble mean is way out over here. It's probably too much. Uh, we're seeing a trend now with Melissa's location, maybe a little closer to Jamaica than that. So perhaps this northeasterly or central grouping uh, is more likely to be closer to reality in the end. That's more where the GFS ensemble is. Now, despite the GFS itself jamming up in Hispaniola, the ensemble still shows us a reasonable range of possibilities where we see a slow meander that eventually moves westward near Jamaica here. So you'll see these 
these members in the vicinity of the island, again, whether it's north or south or over Jamaica, pretty difficult to say right now, but you can see that there are some that are south and some that are more between Cuba, Jamaica, and Haiti, and then eventually making that turn towards the northeast as the ridge breaks down. Uh, either way, you can see on both models here quite a spread, illustrating the uncertainty that we're dealing with. We have essentially a five to seven day forecast. We could still be dealing with this storm for a week or so in the Caribbean and then potentially the Bahamas afterward. And all that uncertainty is compressed into a small space here. So the storm doesn't go anywhere very quickly, uh, but we're having the uncertainty associated with a five plus day forecast. This is a plot of the tracks from some of the main deterministic models and ensemble means used by the National Hurricane Center. This has tightened up a little bit over the last couple of days, but still plenty of uncertainty here. Uh, you can see the GFS in red moving immediately over Haiti and out to the northeast. That's probably an eastern outlier that can be mostly discarded at this point. Same with models like the UK Met that go straight west over the Western Caribbean here. Everything in the middle kind of shows you the, the reasonable range of expectation here, I think, at this point in time, expecting that slow northward drift, then a westward drift turn in the vicinity of Jamaica, and then ultimately that northeastward turn, which could bring this over parts of Cuba and the Bahamas ultimately, but too much uncertainty in that part of the forecast yet to be certain about potential impacts and where those impacts may occur. Uh, there is going to be interaction potentially with the high terrain of Hispaniola and Jamaica and Cuba that will govern the intensity forecast of Melissa. Uh, that will matter a lot in terms of whether it passes over land or remains over water uh, during the forecast period. This is the European Ensemble mean upper level flow. This is the current time. There's Melissa. You'll see the trough over the Bahamas and Cuba generating this westerly flow in teal colors here over Jamaica and hitting the storm from the west, so moderate shear persists. Uh, the key fact here is that this trough is going to move out and so that teal color you'll see will begin migrating to the north, no longer being over Jamaica, but over Cuba instead, as the ridge builds in over the Florida Straits in the mid-levels. And so the flow aloft uh, slackens off a little bit over the Caribbean and therefore lessens the wind shear over Melissa by a touch. The wind shear will likely not go away, and so the environment will not be optimal for intensification of the storm, but it's likely to allow an inner core to ultimately develop if Melissa is not significantly interacting with the high terrain of the Greater Antilles, if it stays over water for a significant length of time during the weekend, we're likely to see a bona fide hurricane form and possibly even a major hurricane if it stays over water. And that's what we're seeing on high resolution hurricane models like NOAA's HAFS model. This is HAFS A, showing the development of a bona fide inner core wind field on Saturday morning, and then as the storm begins to move west, you'll see that it stays to the south of Jamaica and continues to intensify with a category three and four hurricane eventually developing as the storm drifts toward the west southwest and ultimately makes a turn at some point back towards the northeast. Again, here are lots of details, both on the track and the intensity that depend on land interaction and exactly where the storm moves in the short term. If you're somewhere in, you know, Haiti, eastern Cuba, Jamaica, even the Cayman Islands, you got to be ready for a possible hurricane strike. And that's going to involve not only the potential, you know, wind field of a strengthening hurricane and the surf and the, the waves that come with that, uh, but especially in this case, the rainfall. You can see just how long a storm like this is meandering for days in this part of the world. And unfortunately, we're already seeing, you know, heavy rain spreading up into the mountainous terrain of southern Hispaniola well far away from the center of the storm. And all this rain is going to just continue spreading towards the northwest, affecting not only Hispaniola, but Jamaica and Cuba and beyond. And this could be a pretty severe flooding risk setting up for portions of this region. This is the European model showing a potential way that the accumulated precipitation may look out over the next five to six days. You know, yellow here, we're talking about rainfall in feet instead of inches you know, hundreds of millimeters here, uh, this would be a significant issue and something that we're watching closely for this storm. This is the National Hurricane Center official forecast showing a slow motion for the entirety of the forecast. This point right here is five days from now. So again, the story with Melissa is slow movement. Again, rainfall, a big concern directly as a result of that. 
you can see the slow drift to the north and then towards the west. Uh, this forecast has been adjusting over time. Initial forecasts were more towards Haiti, then we switched to well south of Jamaica, and now we're inching closer to Jamaica with the official forecast with a hurricane watch and a tropical storm warning issued for the entirety of the island. Hurricane watch remains in effect for the uh, peninsula of Haiti here on the south side uh, because we don't really know just how close the center of the storm may come to the peninsula before potentially turning west as is currently expected. Still some uncertainty there. You can see the letter M indicating major hurricane, so lots of intensification expected as long as the storm remains over water. Now if this track were to shift directly over the mountainous island of Jamaica, that would probably change the amount of intensification that is expected, but a hurricane is likely here given the slight improvement in the environment around Melissa that we expect. And this is another map from the National Hurricane Center showing the first three days of accumulated rainfall. This three-day forecast is not long enough to capture all of the rainfall, but it captures the part of the track where the storm is starting to make a move towards Haiti and Jamaica, and you can see the encroachment of heavy rainfall amounts, including well to the northeast of the center. Again, you could see the rain already occurring in the southern part of Hispaniola even as we speak. And again, uh, more than a foot of rain possible in areas, and that's going to be a huge problem, unfortunately, for these mountainous areas, and hope everyone stays safe from the potential flash flooding and mudslides that may occur there. That's about it for this video. I'll continue to post updates on X and the rest of my social media platforms uh, as the storm progresses, and I'll have more videos this weekend. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.